Welcome to another segment here painting the acrylic portrait of John Bunyan. Thanks for joining me today here in the video. I'm diving right in, working on his face. Um, the goal of today is to show you how to transition out of a chiaroscuro effect, um, basically two tones on the face and adding more depth. And so currently I'm using burnt sienna, uh, a little bit of raw sienna, just adding a, a little bit of a tone to the interior of the nose on the right hand side and so that way it's not just uh, dark brown but it has a little depth a little bit of reflected light coming from the table and now I need to add the uh, detail for the nostril um, so that's just using raw umber dark um, a little bit of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson and just putting in that little bit of a detail on top of the color I put down previously. Now I'm adding some details for his mustache and just uh, clarifying the shapes. This is a very small format. This is just an eight by 10 portrait. So the brushes have to be pretty small. Um, one op brushes, size zero, size two. Um, and you wanna keep those tips really to a point. Get the paint nice and fluid. I use um, matte medium and a little mist of water to uh, just make the paint very fluid so it's easy to apply. Now I'm adding a little bit of a pinkish tone to the lips um, and that is with burnt sienna and I believe um, pyro red orange a little bit of alizarin crimson uh, along with a tiny bit of titanium white and then just blending those together. I'm going to be adding a little more detail for his mustache and just getting the edge. You have to do a lot of testing with your colors. Um, you don't want to just put down the first color that you mix. Sometimes you apply it to the canvas. You don't like what you see that you go back and uh, go back to the drawing board, so to speak, or in this case, the palette and mix a different color until you get something that really works. So it's a little bit of a, a trial and error process, but um, it's better than just putting down a lot of different colors and trying to make them work. So here I'm really trying to get uh, the right color here to sculpt his mustache and just get the uh, edges defined. Because the lighting is coming from the left hand side, um, from the window above and if you've seen my previous videos um, you'll know that John Bunyan was put into prison for preaching the gospel um, back in 1600s England when it was illegal to do so uh, to preach without a license um, he was incarcerated for that he was put in jail for that and during that time was when he wrote the Pilgrim's Progress and here I just added a glaze on top of his mustache using uh, raw umber dark, little raw sienna. And so we're getting some contrast then between the lighter skin tone of his face and that darker area of his mustache. Um, and I did add a little bit of a glaze to the edge, um, the, that chiaroscuro shadow and then the highlight. And that was using a little bit of burnt sienna, raw sienna, and pyro red orange so you it's good to add a warmer color on those transitional points between the darkest shadows and the highlight shadows or I should say the the highlighted portions rather um, it's good to add a, a more vibrant color where those two areas meet together and now I'm darkening his chin just a little bit because the transition between the shadow portion on the right side of his cheek and jaw is too harsh. So I have to develop something that will segue out of that into the highlighted area. And I'm just testing the color to really find something that will work for it. But here it's going to be a little cooler in tone because we want to suggest the idea of that 5 o'clock shadow, you know, where... Um, he has a little bit of stubble growing back in on his chin. Now John Bunyan had uh, basically a mustache, kind of a longer mustache, but he didn't have a beard. If you look in the uh, 
portraits of him from the 17th century. Um, that's how he looked. So I'm trying to portray him accurately here uh, without a beard. So now with uh, that glaze then, that gives the turns the form a little bit more. And you want to have a juxtaposition then of strong um, contrasts where the break between light and dark values is immediate. And then you want to have some areas where that break between light and dark values is more gradual, almost like looking at the surface of a ball. And so with his chin, because that form is more round, we can get away with that. Now I'm adding some dark shadows um, across um, the underside of his chin and neck, and that's just uh, running along the edge of the collar of his shirt. Um, and that's kind of the old, almost old frock collar, but not quite. But anyway, getting those darker shadows in there gives it one more layer of depth. So um, you can see I had basically that first tone um, just between a chiaroscuro light and dark. Then I added um, a mid-tone to segue into the highlight. And now a darker tone on top of that initial um, chiaroscuro no tan, I guess you could call it, kind of a layer. And it, I'm emphasizing his cheeks even more. So now we're getting that shadow area between his hair and the edge of his face. And that's really important because the light is not going to really get to that point. And so you really want to um, develop the depth by getting those darkest values locked in on the face as soon as you can. And that's just turning the form of his head even more, giving it more depth. And making it look like his hair is, uh, you know, has some three dimensionality to it. It's sticking out over on top of his face enough that it's not allowing the light to get to that point. And you can see how that's starting to build really a good amount of depth in his face by adding that darkest shadow. Uh, raw Umber Dark, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, those are the colors I would use for a glaze like this. And uh, that creates a really rich black. Now you can use ivory black um, straight out of the tube, but you're going to get a richer black by mixing your own. And you can really then control the color temperature quite a bit. Now here I added just a little bit of uh, raw umber dark and a tiny bit of raw sienna uh, just to lighten up the shadow directly under his chin. Um, because I noticed it does get a little bit lighter over there on that side as it is getting closer to the highlighted area. I added a little bit of burnt sienna uh, just to warm that up. And um, that adds just a little more depth by doing that. All right, and now I'm going to continue adding more depth to his face. And we want to add uh, just a little bit of a shadow just a little bit of a shadow under his chin. And we're showing kind of an area where there's a reflected light going up on the bottom of his chin, but where those two areas meet, it's gonna be even darker. So we're adding a kind of a pinpoint area of darkness just at that transitional area. And we're going to um, darken a little more under his lip and just build up that contrast there. And now we're turning the form here just on the edge of his mouth and, and getting a little more definition under his mustache area as well. That's very important. Now I'm darkening directly under his lip. There's going to be a strong shadow right under his lip area. And I'm using, again, uh, raw umber dark um, primarily, maybe a little bit of some other colors left in my palette. I want to refine that nostril area. So just above his nostril, the, the wing of the nose. And then using that same color to intensify the shadows behind the, the hair on the left side of his face. And we'll just kind of sculpt that area a little bit and create some definition between that area and the highlighted part of his face.
Now you can see him darkening the underside of his hair just to show that there's some depth and the hair curls down a little bit. And again, that allows the highlighted portion of his face to stand out more. We want to add some depth to the hair using uh, raw umber dark and burnt sienna and uh, just add a few glazes, but maintaining the highlights. You can see where I'm leaving off in a few spots so it really shows that highlighted part of his hair. But I'm darkening it just enough so that his skin tones really stand out. And we'll darken the other side too just a bit to make it match. And now it's causing his, uh, his face to stand out quite a bit more and giving it much more contrast. And I can bring that same color, that same color down into the other part of the hair. And this is using matte medium. Matte medium is uh, basically acrylic without the pigment. It's, it's clear and uh, you can apply it to create translucent techniques like this. It makes shading so much easier with acrylic. And you can build up depth and you can slowly transition from a sketch into a finished painting. And this is a technique that I teach my students worldwide at Realistic Acrylic Portrait School. I have several students there learning this technique and many of them are able to paint a convincing portrait, a realistic portrait, their very first time. Uh, so we have a lot of fun over there and of course I'd invite you to check out realisticacrylic.com. I have uh, more free tutorials there and classes that go further in depth. But anyway, um, right now I'm going to just add a few highlights um, to the shadowed portion of his hair. And this is using more of an opaque technique. So you can mix up the translucent glazing technique with your traditional um, acrylic opaque technique and get some really fantastic results with that. I'm adding just a little bit of a highlight on the interior area of that shadow. And that's going to just about take us here to the end of this video. Um, but I plan on continuing this more and showing you, um, hopefully, the entire process or close to the entire process of this painting. And uh, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And I hope it's really been helpful for you. Um, of course, I'd encourage you to join me at realisticacrylic.com. Uh, you will find all kinds of tutorials there that will be helpful for you. Um, delving into some different aspects of portrait painting. Realisticacrylic.com. Love to see you there. Thank you so much. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.